Isaiah's honors. Um, to Isaiah's honors presentation. Um, Isaiah, Isaiah is a music minor. That's how I got to know him so well. He's also a computer computational science major. So it is appropriate that he is doing the paper that he's doing on music and video games. And before we start, I would just ask, I think most people have done it, but we want to keep our cameras off because a live stream works better if we have them off and also it provides a little bit less distraction. So Isaiah, it's all yours. Go for it. Oh, and then also hold questions till the end. Right. Very good. Okay. All right. So today we're going to be talking about a video game series known as Artinelico and its use of diegetic music and how that interacts with emotion. Now, Artinelico, what is that? It is a series of RPGs for the PlayStation family of consoles. There are three games in the series, which are right here. And it takes place in the world of our shell, which is this world blanketed by a sea of poison clouds. And in these poison clouds stand three computerized towers that are the last bastion of humanity. And the three towers are as follows. These towers, uh, excepting the second tower, all function as something known as a song server, which we will discuss a bit more a bit later. But it's important to ask, what exactly is diegetic music? Now, I'm sure you're familiar with the term background music. You might not be familiar with the more technical term for it, which is incidental music. This is music that is added so that the audience can hear it, but none of the characters can. Diegetic music is its opposite. It's music that the characters can hear and interact with. This, um, this a good analogy for this is listening to the radio and humming along versus there being sad music during a sad scene. And one is livable. One you can actually imagine happening. You wouldn't expect yourself to be followed around like by an orchestra here playing music that you can't hear when something bad happens. So the other is added in post-production or whatnot to help convey emotion, as well as to fill silence, because silence can be a bit awkward. Now, why exactly is Artinelico relevant? This actually ties back all the way to the time of the Greeks and their doctrine of ethos, which is also known as the doctrine of effects. And it's this concept of emotion, being able, you can elicit emotion through music. And Artinelco is a game series very much built upon this. You get this case of characters singing music that elicits emotion that has tangible effects as well. The two are intrinsically linked, these emotions and the effect they can have on the physical world. And thus, you get this really interesting case of emotion being very, very important to the story, this conveyance of emotion. And it allows for things like character growth to be shown off, as well as mirroring what the song might be doing, because these songs themselves are actually magic, in a sense. But yes, you get a very interesting study in how emotion and diegetic music can interact. And then you also get this interesting blurring of lines at times, because you just have diegetic music taking the place of what would normally be background music in a video game, like during battles, for example. You get music that is technically diegetic music. 
So uh, you're probably wondering about the weird characters that have been up on the screen next to the English. That would be Hymnoscript, which is a script created for the fictional language Hymnos, which is used in the Artinelico games. And these are the characters for it. Just to give you a quick look at how the writing system works. Now, Hymnos was designed to be the most efficient, well, one of the most efficient ways to convey emotion. It, like each sound in the language, each word crafted to most efficiently convey what that concept is. And since feelings and songs are intrinsically linked, you get these songs that often use hymnos to be more efficient with how emotion is conveyed. And this emotional conveyance is very important to how the songs work as magic, because the feelings from these songs are actually picked up by the aforementioned song servers and executed almost like a computer program that allows wondrous things to be accomplished. And the most powerful uh, song singers are Rave Tales, which are synthetic songstresses created from biofluid and other technologically advanced things. So yeah, they're influently hin fluent inherently fluent in hymnos. So they basically are by default, very efficient in expressing their emotions. Now, because of the programmatic nature of the songs in Archinelico, they use a more program-like name theming. So you get songs titled something like format, extension, and then what the program name is. So for example, you get songs like Execre Nation, Method Metaphalica, Exec with Method Metaphalica, which you can all see here, some examples of. And now we can talk a bit about how Hymnos works so we can understand how, just how it conveys emotion. Now, Standard hymnos makes use of three words at the beginning of the sentence that convey things like strength of emotion, what exactly the emotion is, and whether or not the singer wants it to continue. And this expresses the singer's emotional feelings about what is going on. So we have these emotion words, which are here. And then, for example, I will give you the hymno sentence, Wasye da Crucio Hymna, which would mean I enjoy writing music. And you have this breakdown, which we'll see in a bit, that I'm very happy. I want that to continue to create songs and each word's equivalent in hymnos. So you actually get this very compact expression of how someone feels just with three words. So I think you can see the efficiency in that. Now, notice how I said standard hymnos. There is another dialect known as New Testament of Pastily. And that actually has to do with part of the distinction between what exec and method are, because you you might have been wondering what's the difference between those two things. So you get, a standard hymnos sentence like ega exec hymna metaphalica trossel phage e gu eo enterfelia versus a sentence from a method song, which is written in New Testament apostoli. That's heket et merfatia yor in yam nama metaphalica. Which, if you don't understand how it works, that just looks like a mess. New Testament apostoli has its whole this whole very complicated grammar structure that was designed to make it even more efficient than hymnos normally is. So we're gonna 
start listening to these songs and talking about their use of various tricks to get emotions across. For example, the one we're going to listen to first, Chronicle Key, makes use of minor key and use of dynamics in the voice and ensemble to convey not only sadness, but also this growing resolution to do one's duty. Now, uh, it's important to just touch upon this lightly, but there's also, it's important to think about the concept of ethnocentrism in music theory, which means music theory often just pays more attention to Western standards and conventions of music. Luckily, this song is based more off of Western conventions anyway, so it's fine to apply Western music theory to it. So let's listen. So as you can see, the singer starts off very hesitantly and then is joined by this ensemble, which increases the volume. And you can see this increase of resolution. They've become more resolute. And as I mentioned, the use of minor key sort of conveys the sadness that the singer Misha has about having to continually sing this song for a large chunk of her life to seal away a powerful being. Next, we're going to talk about one of my personal favorites, which is execrination. With this, you get things such as word painting, which is using contour, dynamics, harmony, and sort of meshing those together with the lyrics to create a song that mirrors what's being said being sung. So, here we go. Nikawa kuba kono uta wo yobiki kase tamae. Yuruku fuku akatsuki no kaze. So we get this use of very arc-like melodic contours that mirror this imagery of birds, which I reminds me sort of how a bird flaps its wings, the, the pulsing of that, the pattern. 
And then we are gonna talk about a series of songs known as Metathalica. These tie in with a series of legends known as the Legends of Replanka in game. And these songs tell one part of the story with Metafal exec Metafalica telling the first part of this, the uh, method Metafalica telling the second part and exec with method Metafalica telling the two combined for the full story. Metafal exec Metafalica ends with at the more tragic halfway point where the character in the myth collapses from exhaustion and dehydration, where Method Metafalca talks about all the people that she had helped actually beginning to help her in return, and how that leads to the creation of a new paradise. Now, these songs themselves have the function of creating a whole new continent in the sky because in the region that this song is sung in, they're basically running out of space and they can't move anywhere else because there's the whole sea of poison clouds thing that's going on. So with this, we can actually talk about the use of motifs, which are repeated melodic or rhythmic harmonic ideas that show up can show up throughout multiple pieces, linking them in some way. A good example is Wagner's Ring Cycle Operas, where he has this fire motif that plays during various parts, such as during the immolation scene, or when Valhalla is burning down near the end of the operas during Gatchadamarang, which is the Twilight of the Gods. So we're gonna take a listen to these motifs for a bit and see how they all get woven together and recontextualized. <laughs> did not need to do that. Uh, anyway, um, you've got this more ominous sort of tone to it, which itself is reflected in, helps reflect back with this whole concept of the first half of the myth having a more dismal end. And then you get this more hopeful part to it in Method Metaphalica. So we'll talk about the three motifs that are reused from that. And yeah, it's a bit sad, but Exec Metafalica only gets the one motif used from its original version. And the thing with these songs is they actually use a lot more Japanese than they do hymnos, but there's still hymnos present. We just aren't gonna get much to listen to those parts, but here's the second motif. And then the third motif. Now, uh, these, as I said, get recontextualized. So motif one, showing up again from Zygmunt We get this removal of the more ominous tone. And then you get motif one from Method being recontextualized a bit more ominously as the singer starts losing heart, becoming afraid. And 
you have her becoming afraid of opening her heart, but then you get the other singer saying, don't worry, I'm here by your side. This is fine. Everything will be fine. So then it gets reintroduced. Much more resolution. And then you, of course, also get direct lyrical quotations, for example. With the two being woven together, and then you get the next two motifs. And then... I'd like to give thanks. I'm sorry, I couldn't talk about that more, but I believe we're running a bit short on time for the presentation. But I'd like to give thanks to Dr. Itma, who is my advising professor for this. And then Mr. Piles, who is our music theory teacher here at McKendree. He helped me work out some rhythmic issues with my transcription of Renation, so I could show you that playing alongside it. And then, of course, the creator of the Archinelico series, Akira Tsuchiya, uh, he created the series, he created the hymno server, which is a dictionary and contains supplementary materials about how hymnos works. And then there's several fans like Neil Talam, who developed an English version of the hymno server and added a few nifty features on top of what was already there. And Ravitel's Melody, which is an online group that documents stuff about Archinelico's setting and such. So here's some sources. If you're interested, the original hymno server, the English version, and then the two setting books. And then I have the last source right here with me, actually, which is the Kurt Hymneth, which is an omnibus release, has a lot of the songs and some materials like books over when songs are sung and such. And that's that. So thank you.